I love 3D printing miniatures, and I got my hands on the February 2023 bundle from Mammoth Factory Games. The question is, is Mammoth Factory the king of the STL jungle? Find out this week on Short Rest Studios. Hey, I'm Judd, and this is Short Rest Studios, and this week we're going to talk about the February bundle from Mammoth Factory Games entitled Nomads of the Droughtlands. Mammoth Factory is an SDL subscription service, and we'll talk about how it compares to other services like it, as well as my feelings on the February bundle. But first, let me give you the rundown of what comes in the bundle. So for about $13 with this February bundle, you get 18 minis, you get three terrain pieces, you get a four piece dragon turtle miniature with a hundred millimeter base. And no, I did not print the dragon turtle because I have a small uh, resin printer that won't fit that hundred millimeter base. So I didn't print that one. There's also a 36 page adventure PDF that includes stat blocks for NPCs and monsters, as well as some pretty nice artwork. There are VTT tokens, printable paper minis, digital maps. They kind of thought of everything for running this adventure with the minis that are included. All right, let's talk about the adventure for a minute. It's pretty action packed. It moves straight from one encounter to the next. It's got some intrigue, some comic relief. It, it kind of hits all the marks as far as an enjoyable adventure would go. It's also set in Mammoth Factory's own campaign setting, and it's got kind of an interesting theme. I wasn't too sure about it in the beginning, but it, it grew on me. It's African inspired. All the <laughs> all the NPCs uh, and monsters that you deal with are kind of like lion based, cat based creatures. So that's pretty interesting and kind of fun. It makes for some fun minis, as you'll see in just a moment. And it, it's a pretty fun setting, but like I said, it took a little while to grow on me. But if you're someone who is interested in that kind of uh, African inspired theme, or if you're just really into big cats, <laughs> this is probably something that you'll enjoy. And it's got a variety of settings, city, village, savanna. It's, it's, it's a pretty good looking adventure uh, just from a quick once over. Let's talk about the miniatures now. And I'm just going to say up front, I really like the design of these minis. I thought they were a lot of fun. So I printed five out of the 18 that were available because I wanted to jump on it and get it ready for this review. But there were a lot of others that I thought were really cool. These are just five that I immediately thought I want to print these. So let's look at those right now. First, Caracali Shadow Weaver 3. So the Caracali is a race and there are multiple of these. So this is number three, but this is my favorite pose. Uh, out of all the ones that I printed, he's he's leaping over this rock. He's got a knife in one hand. There's a lot of action going on in here. He's just captured in this moment. And I really like the way this came out. And I like the character design. I like the way he's got big ears and a small head and he looks very lithe and and he's he looks like a bad dude, right? The next one I printed is Leorin Warblade 4. Leorin is the race. Warblade is like a soldier. He's the fourth in this series of particular miniatures. And and he is, he looks like a bad dude, man. He, he is ready to throw down. He's got that ax hefted over his head in a very much Thundercats ho moment. That's really what it reminds me of. But, but I do like this design. There's some nice little details, good musculature. Um, it's, it's really beautifully done and, and a lot of fun to look at. The next one I printed is Grimalkin 1. And in this case, a Grimalkin is a magical beast that's basically a winged lion made of fire. And he looks pretty cool. And the artwork looks great. I'm a little concerned. There's a lot of detail here, but I am a little concerned about his facial features. I can't quite make them out. But I'm hoping that when I actually get in and paint him, that they'll be more visible once I put some paint on them. But I do think he's very cool. I love the wings and the fact that there's little holes in it and stuff. It kind of gives it more the uh, impression of fire. So the fourth piece I printed is a piece of terrain, the bush willow. It's a, it's a tree. Um, and it's a cool looking tree. It's very neat. Like I like the design of it. It does give that savanna African vibe a little bit with the sort of flat top. And it's really a beautiful model. I really enjoyed this one. Now, finally, the last one that I printed has nothing to do with the adventure that's included in the package. Uh, this is strictly an Easter egg for us, us nerds out there. This is Katigo Montoya. Yes, somebody killed his father and they should prepare 
to die. So my favorite of these, I don't know, I like them all, but I'm kind of leaning towards Katigo Montoya because I am a Princess Bride fan. So there you go. Hey, just a quick reminder, if you're getting some value out of this, hit that thumbs up down below to like this video. That helps it get out to more people, which helps me out. And if you want to keep up with what we're doing here on Short Rest Studios, hit that battle X to subscribe. So let's talk about pros and cons. Pro, they're very detailed, but not too much. And what I mean by that is this, I'm not sure that my printer was able to capture all of the detail. For instance, there's places where you can see the weave of fabric on some of these characters, and I'm not sure that my printer was able to reproduce that, but I don't think it takes away from the end product. If I could see that, it would definitely add to the end product. There's a lot of detail. If your printer doesn't capture it all, they're still gonna look really nice. They're nicely designed, but if you've got a really nice printer that can't capture it all, they're gonna look fantastic. The second thing is that they're well supported. I had no issues printing these, none at all. Everything came off the plate just fine. They came out great because there were a lot of good supports. So those are the pros. So the cons, there's really just one. And for me, it goes back to the second pro, the supports. There are a ton of supports. Kind of like with Loot Studios, I feel like sometimes they just really overdid it. And I understand that they're trying to make sure that these things print successfully on a wide variety of printers in a wide variety of situations. But man, there are a ton of supports on these and most of us are gonna be printing them pre-supported. We're not going to be doing our own supports unless we're a little more expert, you know, and I'm a hobbyist. Most of the time I'm going to print pre-supported. But let me show you with the bush willow here, the savannah tree. Um, very, you know, like I said, it's a really nice design, but there were a ton of supports on this thing. The top of it, it printed here. This is how it was attached to the build plate. And so there were supports going to a raft here. And I mean, it was a forest of supports on top of this thing. And I really didn't know if I was gonna be able to get them off without breaking the thing, okay? Eventually, obviously, I did. And actually, I am I was pleasantly surprised that it's not more scarred up than it is. The way that it's designed, um, it's actually really hard to see the scars. So that's a good thing. Now, the other thing is like, there were su supports here uh, between this branch and the top of the tree and it was and, and all up in here and it was really hard to get a lot of those eventually I did but it did take me a while and I want to point out something if you don't know this already this is just kind of a pro tip for us hobbyists out there um, make sure to print minis with ABS like resin and not standard resin uh, because it has a little more flexibility if I hadn't been able to bend this guy out of the way a little bit, I might not have been able to get to those supports as easily, but there is that. Supports were a bit overdone, hard to remove. That's really the only con. So what's the verdict? Is Mammoth Factory Games the king of the STL mini subscription jungle? I don't think so. I think that title probably goes to Loot Studios or Lord of the Print. Those guys have fantastic designs. Loot Studios in particular, I mean, you get a ton of minis for not much more a month than you pay Mammoth Factory for their subscription. Where Mammoth Factory shines is that adventure. There's lore to back it up. There are NPCs, monsters, stat blocks, a whole adventure that you can play, generate your own characters or use characters you're already using whatever and add this to your own campaign you could do that if you wanted to you can take these creatures just like you can with any other package and use them in an adventure but mammoth factory gives you an adventure and an, and a pretty nicely done one that you can enjoy with these minis or that you can play in an online setting because they provide all of this other printed and digital material that you can use so is mammoth factory worth the money Absolutely. I think it was a lot of fun. Great adventure, great minis, tons of fun. That's my verdict. Thank you again for joining me on Short Rest Studios to talk about the February package from Mammoth Factory Games. I had a lot of fun uh, messing around with this one. So please, if you got some enjoyment out of this, hit the thumbs up down below to like this video. Hit the battle axe to subscribe so you can keep up with what we're doing here. And I'll see you next time on Short Rest Studios.